Hey everybody, we're back on Minecraft, and today I've got a lot to update you on, and we're going to be building some fun things, so let's get started. So I should probably update you first on what I've been doing, and that is just a whole lot of grinding. Mainly, I've been grinding the fishing farm, and obviously I'm right next to the mob farm, so basically both. Close to 50 to 60 hours, probably. Now, obviously, I left my computer AFK. I didn't stay in here for 60 hours. But I should probably show you what I got and then uh, kind of show you what I did with the farm. There's also been a lot of work underground also, which we'll check out. But yeah, this is just a portion of the books that I got. So we got one entire double chest, two entire double chests, three entire double chests. Of These are all enchanted books. Plus, I've still got some in here. And this is probably maybe half of the ones that I already brought down and already enchanted. Along with the books, we also filled up every single one of these chests with enchanted bows, filled up every single chest with enchanted uh, fishing rods, lots of fish. All of these are filled with saddles. These are almost filled with puffer fish. Um, I've got four and 17 stacks of Nautilus shells. Um, doubled my name tags oh you thought that was it nope more bows more <laughs> fishing rods and every single one of these is filled completely to the brim more that is my dog in the background all of these completely filled to the brim the reason i actually started recording is because i'm running out of room so i want to build a new storage area so i showed you what was up here let me quickly show you what I got down there, and then we'll start actually playing Minecraft and the fishing farm and stuff. So, of course, when fishing, you get a lot of XP. So, we got some new enchantments, because the last time I used my fishing farm, these actually weren't out. The aquatic update wasn't out. So, we got plenty of loyalty books, plenty of riptide books, um, and then, of course, we got more... Like this, this is almost, this chest is almost full. Oopsies. I might need more, I need another power chest. And yeah, you could just probably tell these are a lot of books. A, mo a lot of them I just got recently. Um, but yeah. Now, here's the exciting part. So obviously I have a lot of levels, so I enchanted quite a bit. This is all the stuff that I enchanted. So, I have almost a double chest completely filled. These are all, now these aren't all usable because I need a, get them protection for efficiency five unbreaking i need to do all that but these are all enchanted and i know one of these is a godlike book it's this one efficiency four depth strata three unbreaking three silk touch that is a godlike book right there we got loyalty you know what uh might as well just oh oopsies whatever we'll just leave that but yeah so all of this is enchanted i even got 40 levels on me right now i should probably what are you doing down here i should probably use these levels before i die but just kill a stupid ender. What are you doing down here? Obviously, also, since I've been farming, I've not been in peaceful, so that's kind of new to me. So before we go on to the fishing farm, um, let's check out what I've been doing underground with the slime farm since last time, and just kind of some fun things that I've been working on. So you might think, like, 60 hours of the fishing farm was a lot. The next thing that I'm about to show you took even longer. Now, real quickly, if you haven't watched last episode with the slime... Uh, the slime. Okay. <laughs> if you haven't watched the last episode of the slime farm, just. Oh god, I keep forgetting that I'm in. Ah, you know what? Screw it. Because you guys might have not seen the slime farm before. I had like a little. I basically dug out a small space for the slime farm, and then I said that I'd start clearing it out next episode. Well, you could probably already tell. Yeah this is a lot of clearing out and even this is only about half of what i need to do i need to push this side by probably 10 more push this side by probably another 10 20 push this side about another 10 20 and i need to oopsies and i need to push that side by probably another 10 it's gonna be a little risky here but i think this will work out there we go and then parkour master there we go so yeah i did this in multiple ways where it's been dug and where it's been tnt it's like Basically, the bottom has been dug, and then everything up top has been TNT. You can see right there, you can see like a straight line there. Um, there you can kind of tell, it's kind of like, there's like, there's like a three-hole gap. So that's all been dug. Most of the bottom here has been dug, since obviously it's flat. A lot of it's been TNT too, but 
yeah, a lot of this is flat. And you could tell in a lot of like these places right here, that's all TNT. Up here, it's all pickaxe. But, like basically wherever there's craters, that's all TNT. That's all TNT up there. Um, if you see a lot of sand, that's where the lava pits were because the easiest way to, if you guys didn't know, the easiest way to get rid of lava is just to drop sand on it and then it'll go away. You could also just use water buckets and then dig out the obsidian, but that's a lot longer than your sand. And then obviously with the water, I use sponges. Uh, so with this also, obviously I got a lot of material from all of this. So this is where the beacon was. Obviously I removed the beacon. There was also a beacon over there and I got a lot of chests filled with materials. Now this is probably less than half of the material because I said I was using TNT earlier and guess what happened to my chests? I accidentally blew them up so there is quite a bit of material here but a lot of it was blown up I did get lucky though and basically the one chest that actually mattered didn't get blown up that was my diamonds chest so I did collect quite a few diamonds we check here we've got about a stack of slime in this one we got like two stacks in this we've got three stacks which is pretty nice and another maybe half stack so it's not producing as much but at the same time I've basically um only been down here when digging and when i was doing doing that i was in peaceful yeah i'll end up taking a lot of those materials up later because i still have to continue digging a lot of that needs to be dug out this needs to be dug that needs to be dug everything needs to, a lot of it needs to be dug out still and i'm just gonna show you guys some just funner things that i've been working on for no apparent reason i just thought it was interesting so when farming up there i showed you guys the amount of bones and sulfur and stuff that i got um, but I also got quite a bit of arrows, so I don't know why, but I just built this thing where it just shoots arrows from top, bottom, like every single side, and it shoots a crap ton of arrows. Why? I don't know, but I can tell you, I had like five, six double chests of arrows, and that wasn't even enough to fill all of it. Uh, but I got quite a bit more, so I'll probably bring more, and I need some redstone. And while I'm getting the rest of it, I did forget to mention that uh, I did work on armor. I, the one thing that I really lacked so far is armor. So I, I worked on getting more of the armor upgraded. And even some of the armor that was down here, I actually put back up here because I didn't think it was worthy. And I upgraded the crap out of my own armor. So every single one of these has mending on it. So I basically never have to replace it unless uh, I drown in lava or fall off the void. So yeah, it has feather falling, frost, protection, everything. Mending, protection, respiration. So... My, I've got a pretty godlike set of armor, and yeah, I fixed up a lot of my tools, got myself a godlike fishing rod, which is also very nice. I find this really cool, and what I might do is I might take this and expand it to like make it really long, and even maybe more arrows if I can find an easier design. Before I show you guys, I should actually show you probably how it works. So it's pretty simple. Um, I have on every single side kind of like this uh, checker pattern. Yeah, so the easiest way I found, but I didn't work on this very long and I was probably super tired, but a checker pattern and then just using torches to go up and down, up and down uh, on each of these. And you can just see like one repeater going to each of these, uh, each of the dispensers. And then I use, and also another reason I use the torches because I wanted the back side open so I could place hoppers to feed it more arrows. Now the top and the bottom doesn't have these hoppers, but for the top, I just laid on some redstone, which is fairly easy and let me get to the bottom here and at the bottom i did the same thing basically and just like uh put the repeaters around the sides not a very like 200 iq build just redstone but let's go ahead and hook this up and you can see arrows will start firing pretty quickly and it's nice that they don't all fire at the same time um because that'd be kind of boring you can kind of see like a lot of arrows going on so this is basically some like indiana jones stuff right here and it'll just keep going and going and going. And it's kind of fun to run through it because, like, you'll start getting hit. And, yeah. Um, this uses a lot of arrows. Just imagine, guys. There's probably, like, 20-plus dispensers on each side. Ouch, 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 ouch. 20-plus dispensers on each side. And they're all shooting one of See, my, literally my entire inventory is already filled with arrows. So, I've shown you guys what I've been doing underground. Kind of the fun things that I've been working on. And the absolutely insane amount of grinding that i've been doing um so today what we're going to be doing is showing you the new fishing farm um and then we're going to be trying to get ourselves a trident that one episode where we first went out and explored uh we ended up getting a trident but i keep 
we kept losing it because I didn't have loyalty on it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and... Um, I hate when it does this. My Frostwalker keeps freezing my thing. Uh, but this time we're actually going to go get... Um, I tried it and try to keep it. But first, I'm going to show you guys the fishing farm and how to build it. So this design is by uh, Suzuma Void. Uh, I think it's one of his latest fishing farms. It's the 1.13 fishing farm. Uh, if, you, if you're curious, just literally type in Minecraft fishing farm uh, Suzuma Void, which is X-I-S-U-M-A uh, Void, and you'll probably find it now. I am actually like really early game friendly there is not a lot to do with it let me get my fishing farm out so this is the entire fishing farm right here basically all you need is an iron door and some hoppers and you've basically you're basically good on this so how it works you just stand in this corner over here so the leftmost corner and then you aim down here at the frame you want to get it like at the corner of the frame where it doesn't move like this so the second an item will pop up, the item will go down in the hopper and it'll recast the fishing. Okay, I love how the second I'm recording, this just takes absolutely forever. This should happen in a second here. Hopefully, there we go. You can see, so I got an item and it just recast it again. And you just sit here forever. And in my case, I also have my quadruple mob farm above me. Uh, so I ended up just farming both, like both types. And that really helps because you can see down here there's a bunch of mob drops from the mob farm but there's also mixed in here drops like uh, the enchanted books arrow stuff like that and then, and then i do need to take these books back down because you can see there's a lot of good stuff in here a lot of loyalty a lot of riptide um hopefully some mending not as much oh there's a mending right there but yeah well, let's quickly build the fishing farm now for once in my life i'm actually not going to follow tutorial I'm going to completely try to do this off the top of my head. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that most of you are probably early game, so you don't want to build it in some weird spot like I did. It's easiest to actually build it inside the ground. And you know what I'm going to do? Just a challenge. I'm going to show you just how compact it is. I'm literally going to build it in this little crevice right here. That's how basically it is. easy it is. So, uh, okay. Oh, I forgot that. Uh, this might make the tutorial just a little bit harder. Uh, but what you want to do is just build four blocks down twice and then three blocks so let's go ahead and do that so this is three four and then this one should be three which that was actually probably already fine and i'm just going to cover up these edges here because yeah that makes it hard anyway so uh let me get out of here for a second so four blocks down and then three blocks here Okay, so now that you've got your hole, we're gonna build it and I'm gonna do this as quick as possible. So make sure you get an iron door, place it right here. Once again, make sure it's an iron door, grab two chests and place them there. Now I do this because I usually feed it to somewhere else, but in your case, just put a double chest, put a hopper on top of this one. Then you wanna go over here, grab your tripwire hooks, place one there, place one there, grab an empty uh, item frame, place it right there and fill it with something. Make sure it's filled, just put that there. Grab one ladder, place it right there. You can grab your water, place it on top of this hopper. Then take your string, connect uh, these two right here, and that's it. The farm is done. So finding your storage is kind of your own deal. You you figure out where you want your items to go. Uh, the one that I did up there, I just placed the hopper and fed it all the way to my chest system. And once again, if you want to use it, all you got to do is go in here in this corner and kind of a little bit behind the door find the corner and you're just gonna have to find a sweet spot um to where your fishing rod stays just like how it is right now and then it'll catch an item and throw it back now no video has shown this yet what not to do because i've seen a lot of people confused so if you see your fishing farm go like this you're off of it or you're way too deep inside of it so this is an example of going a little bit way too deep you can see it's not this is not what it's supposed to be doing and once again it's not supposed to be doing that either if you just hold it in the right spot it'll stand still and this is how it should look this is the fishing farm that i built up there everybody so we're going to redo the sword system for the farm and we're going to go get some tridents but first i'm going to go eat some burger king and i'll be back
All right, everybody, I'm back. I had something to eat. Now I'm ready to start playing again. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to upgrade our storage area. So this means a lot of chess making and a lot of organizing. So I'm going to get started. This isn't something I'm probably going to talk through because it's very grindy. So I'm maybe going to time lapse it. We'll see. Let's get started. All right, everybody. So uh, what is it? How, how long ago? All right. It's been about an hour. It's been about an hour. And yeah, all of the chests from all the way around are completely gone and everything is nice and organized in all of these chests that you see here in front of you. So we got your arrows, we got your flesh, we got your saddles, we got your salmon, normal, f is this salmon? Yeah, salmon. What is this called? Cod, right, cod. You got your salmon, you got your cod, you got your lily pads, you got your trash. So I, I just included like sticks, glass, uh, bowls, leather, all that as trash. You got your armor, which I don't get anymore, but I just kept it here. You got your name tags, puffer fish, nautilus shells. I'm going to keep those two empty in case there's like new items added. Uh, glowstone, redstone, eyes, sugar, uh, clownfish. Uh, you got your uh, gunpowder. I, I just want to say sulfur, but it's not sulfur. You got your bones, more bones, because I... Fun fact, every single one of these is filled and every single one of those is filled. So I had to make extra room over. I wasn't even planning to go over here. I was going to just make it like this. But yeah, so I added bones, uh, some more gunpowder, and then all my enchanted bows, and then blah, blah, blah. So all of these are still filled. I'll have to take those down later. And once again, just remember, these are single chests. All these are double chests. So double chests, double chests, double Like, these are all double chests. They're not single. They're double chests. So just imagine all these being normal chests, and then double it. Like, this is... I have over 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. I have over, like, 24 double chests filled with, like... That is a lot of material, but um, I even uh, cleared, I cleared out all these chests, which is nice. So yeah, it's all good. It's all organized. If I need more space, I'm probably going to continue on either on that side or I'm just going to continue on that way. But for now, everything is in here and there is at least a little bit of room uh, for more items in every single one of these. So the only other thing I had specifically planned for this video is getting a trident, fixing it up, and putting some enchantments on it and making a trident farm if they even exist. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of research and see what's up with that. All right, everybody, so this is the next day or two days later, and I think the last time I left off, I said that I was gonna go and try to make a trident farm. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna make a farm today, but I do wanna have a fully kitted out trident. So um, I traveled, where am I right now? 7,000, about 7,800. Uh, so that's a pretty good distance away, probably over 5,000 blocks here from my home. So obviously, I need to try to, they're dropped from the drowned. And yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm at the ocean right now, and I'm just farming them. I've been here for quite a little bit farming them, um, and I finally got one. So I got a trident, and now you guys might be wondering, well, what's a single trident? Like, what's the point of that? Because it's going to break. Um, you guys got to remember we can put mending on this and I have quite a few mending books from the fishing farm So what I'm gonna make sure to do is put mending on this boy and then I'm gonna go ahead and restore it to brand new Obviously, we're gonna put things like loyalty and riptide on it and we're gonna have ourselves a fully kitted out trident And yeah, that's what we're gonna do and then we'll build a farm later uh, but for now Yeah, I didn't really want to put the farming on camera because that's really really boring um I might kill a few more drown. I know I saw a couple down there uh, just for a couple more chances to get maybe a second try to uh, but for now I think we're all good and we're gonna head back to the base and try to fix this one up all right everybody so we're back home we got the trident and I did get a few other things while I was out got a few nautilus shells from like the zombies that carried them or the drown that carried them a few emeralds a treasure map um, I'm not really too worried about any of this stuff so what I'm probably gonna do uh, just for now, I shall just use a regular chest. I'm just going to put this stuff in a chest real quick, and then I'll just sort it out later, because I, I mean, I don't want to deal with that now. So, uh, we got our trident. Let's go ahead and do some enchanting now. Here's the only issue. Um, I don't have many levels right now. So, what we're going to do, we're going to just grab what we need. Uh, mending and loyalty. I think both of those need to go on there, so that's fine. Mending, Loyalty, Riptide. Um, let's go ahead and get a Riptide and Breaking 3. I think that's, I think Unbreaking go, can go on that. And an Impaling. 
and we just need a normal impaling book. So that should should give us impaling, loyalty, riptide, unbreaking, and mending. So that'll be a fully kitted out um, trident. Now, I need to go get some levels. But luckily, if you guys remember, a couple episodes ago, we built uh, that Ender uh, Pearl Farm slash XP Farm. And I did, and I'm, right now I'm trying not to smash my keyboard because you guys could probably hear that very well. Um, we did actually build an enchanting setup over there for the sole purpose that when we're there getting levels we're gonna want to probably enchant there instead of running all the way back here to enchant and back and forth so we'll be able to do it over there okay we made it to the farm here now real quickly let's see if 13 is enough to at least put mending on the thing uh there's some anvils let's go ahead and put mending oh we might okay so that is nine that's five 11 okay so we need to get 11 which we could i could literally probably do in front of your eyes real quickly all right slowly gathering levels we're past 11 so we're good on that front i'm just gonna quickly heal up the trident itself and it looks like we got a full restored trident so yeah that is really really cool i'm really happy that the game added mending because that helps this a whole lot bam there we go an impaling four i'm breaking three loyalty three mending trident now i wonder why like it's kind of weird how it doesn't show like that it's enchanted it's kind of weird but um okay so we got ourselves we actually drop that we got ourselves a nice trident and i'm gonna go ahead and head back to the base okay so completely first time ever using this trident obviously i've picked one up before but i literally threw it and lost it that second so it's gonna be the first time actually playing around with this so what can we do we can attack with it we can throw it and it comes back if we right click again and then we right click wait do we even need a right click so when does it does it come back on its own so okay so it does come back on its own completely let's see how far that thing can go just impels and then and it just comes right back to us okay cool now I know this thing has some special things if you put it in water okay so i googled some things and a little bit confused but i think i know what's going on we are missing one enchantment on this which is channeling um that gives it a special power during thunderstorms i can apparently strike things with lightning so yeah i don't know when that's gonna happen but i know i do have a few channeling books here I do have some so oh mending channeling we could have used that but i know the other book was just as fine too let's hope we have enough levels here 11 oh man we're so close all right there we go we have put every single enchantment that we have so this is what i read off the internet we're going to test a few of these so i'm going to explain every single enchantment so mending obviously when you get xp it fixes it its durability loyalty um that makes your trident come back when it's thrown the higher the loyalty the faster it does on breaking three obviously it takes less durability impaling just does extra damage i don't know if it's to a specific mob but it just does extra damage to something specific i know it's to something specific and channeling in wait a minute we don't have riptide on this but anyway so and then channeling it basically you can strike things with lightning during a thunderstorm but the reason I was kind of surprised I didn't have Riptide on here because somewhere on the, 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 the wiki, I read that Riptide Tridents cannot be thrown because you're, you're throwing yourself with it in the rain and in the water. Does that mean Riptide, 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 Riptide? We can't put Riptide on it. Hmm. So that means. Hmm. So what I'm guessing that means is. Only loyalty or riptide can be put on it at one time. So this trident is good for being thrown. But it's not the trident that flings me through water or rain. So we're going to need to get a second trident. Okay, everybody, we're back after a while because I did have to go get a second trident because I did want to do it during this video. So 
we got our normal one here and I did end up getting a second one and I only put mending riptide and unbreaking on it so I am kind of curious am I able to put loyalty on it um I'm guessing I can't because see I have riptide and it can't be thrown uh let's just put a loyalty book can I put this on here See? No, I can't. Okay, so that is confirmed. You can only have Loyalty or Riptide. So, this one is a Riptide. This one is one that can be thrown. Now, I do want to see how I can launch myself through water and apparently the rain. So, let's go ahead and grab ourselves an Ender Bolt. Now, let's go ahead and go... Okay, that wasn't very good. Let's go back to the castle and... Man, I'm going way too far. I didn't even need to go that far. I just needed to get to the water. Let's go to the water here. And let's see if that's how it works. So if I channel myself, ooh, I can run through the water. Okay, so that is true. That's kind of cool. And apparently if it lightning storms, we can, um, yeah, strike things with lightning. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Um... Alright, so later in the series, probably, we will build, be building a trident farm. Uh, for now, though, I've got two tridents, one with Riptide, one with uh, Loyalty, so I have one of either. Now, I do want to go test out how I can fly through the rain and the whole thunder thing, but obviously, I have to wait for rain, and I'm too impatient to do that. So what I'm going to do, we're going to quickly go to a creative world, and just so you guys can look... And then we'll probably finish off the episode. Alright everybody, we are in a creative world. I just put myself into survival. Uh, so I do have a trident here with Riptide. Let's go ahead and make it rain. Now, I don't know the weather. I don't know. I think this is it, right? Weather rain? This is completely off the top of my head. I don't... Yes, I think it is. And I can, I can throw myself. Does this hurt me? Oh, it does hurt me. Okay, I don't have any feather falling, so I have to... Okay, so... Let's go ahead so I can show you guys. So if it's raining and you have Riptide, you can fling yourself through the air during the rain, which is kind of cool. Okay, so now let's try. Let's go ahead and put this to easy so we can get some mobs. And let's try to make it thunder. Okay, so that's the same command. Just rain, rain and thunder. Wait, I don't have channeling on here. Okay, let me quickly... Uh, let me, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Oopsies. Where am I? Oh, okay. Let me put myself to creative game mode. Creative. What is this? I think I know what this is above me. I think it was a tutorial that I made a long, I made this tutorial years ago, I think, of the, like, self-destruction house. Ooh, a little bit of lag. So, you know, screw it. I don't care anymore. This could be like a little preview into my non aquas adventure. But yeah. If I step in here. I think, yeah. That closes up. And these fireworks are supposed to kill you. Uh, so, yeah. The only way to get out is actually a brick. Oh, it's causing so much lag. Oh, God. I need to get away from that. Oh. But yeah. That was a death trap that I made years ago. And you could see remnants of... <laughs> Uh, ideas and snapshots like actually this is kind of interesting but um, it's a little bit like is the rain that fountain was a prototype for the fountain that we actually have in Aqua's Adventure this was an idea of like top 10 things you could do with TNT uh, over there was a video for a snapshot when those blocks got added uh, but anyway uh, let me go ahead and get one with channeling okay so if can it have riptide and channeling Let's see, can I have Riptide? Because if, if I, it has Riptide, I can't throw it, right? Riptide. No, so you can only have channeling. Or you, you can't have both. Okay, so channeling. Oh. If it hits something, it gets hit with the light. That's super cool, actually. What happens if I hit a creeper? Does it turn into a charged? It does turn into a charged. This is a really... Wow, this is a super easy way now to get charge creepers. All you have to do is make sure it doesn't get killed by the thing, and it becomes charged. And, same thing with pigmen. If you get pigs, 
Get some pigs going. If I hit this, oops, not anvils. If I hit this, it turns into a zombie pigman. Or multiple zo zombie pigmen, apparently. That's super cool. So, the one that we have in Oxford Adventure, if we do have channeling on it, we can do this in Survival too. Alright, everybody, we're back in our single player world. So, yep. That's kind of cool. Actually, I really. I'm a really big fan of these tridents. That is really cool, especially like you throw it, you can see it all the way, and then it just whoop, comes all the way back to you in time. It takes a little bit of time, but it comes back. I'm a really big fan of that, especially the channeling. Now, we do need to maybe deck this one out with impaling. Does impaling work? Even this couldn't have happened, so just telling you guys how useful building one of those pretty early on is. There we go. A fully kitted out Riptide and a fully kitted out Loyalty with channeling also. And I do have a few more channeling books here. Uh, so we'll be able to use those in the future and a few more loyalties. Um, but that's really, really cool. Um, we'll find more uses for them later on, hopefully. Like, I don't know. Maybe we'll make games out of them. We could build farms out of them. Um, and I'm guessing, especially the Riptide one, could be useful. Especially now, um, wanting to get through the ocean monuments. It'll make things 100% easier. Um, farming for more tridents will be easier because I can get through the water easier with the Riptide. And, of course, it has mending, so while I kill the drowns, it'll... So, these open up a good amount of flexibility in the water, which is really, really nice because the game didn't have much flexibility in the water. Um, it was always kind of, like, slow, groggy. It was pretty hard to get through. You'd have to use boats or, you know, stuff like that. But, guys, I think this is going to be it for today. Well, today's episode, but technically I've been filming for one or two days. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and comment as for the channel, and I will see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.